So this is now actual quantum mechanical uh, calculation. So um, these expectation values are what you use to represent likely outcome of an experiment. So we are measuring, when you are, when you are talking about expectation value, you are calculating some physical, um, um, some physical quantity. So um, remember back at this picture, we are imagining a particle, let's say an electron, that's uh, trapped inside a box. What kind of physical properties can you measure for this electron? Okay, we can measure the position and momentum. Anything else? I guess that's actually kind of it. Um, anything else you can build up from position and momentum. Like if you're on energy, energy would be P squared over 2M. Right? Good. All right, so let's uh, um, try to uh, get measure the expectation value of the position for this electron. Uh, which will be fun. Um, now it's fun, and you actually know the end, know the result before you do any calculation, which is kind of good for introductory calculation. So when I, um, so for this, for this electron, when I calculate the average x value, or I'm going to use this symbol to denote it, x inside the angle bracket. When I calculate this, what do you? Expect it to be. Pardon the pun. You, yeah, you expect it to be in the middle just, just based on how this uh, wave function looks, right? What about for E equals 2 state? Now, that's where they are most likely to be found, but what about the average position? Still middle, right? Same thing for here, E3? Same thing for all of them, right? So let's. Uh, um, so let's try doing it for general state here uh, with just the n and see if we get the expectation value or the particle being in the middle. So I'm saying that this is equal to expectation value of x or the way I was describing this expectation value before um, I need to find the probability of the um, probability of the electron being at a particular x location, and um, um, or let me, actually let me express it this way: probability of being at particular x location. This is probability of a particular event happening. And if the electron was at this x location, then the outcome would be, well, outcome would be x. Right? Yes? OK. Um, and the way I was writing it before, I would sum it all up. I going from 1 to some value divided by sum of all the probability of particle being found at some location x. Um, but since we are dealing with a normalized wave function, let's trust our normalization and say that this will be 1 when we do that calculation. So we want to redo that calculation. Uh, this is a little bit problematic, because this is a summation symbol. But um, what we have is a smooth situation. So really, conceptually, the way it works is this. Um, the way, oh, sorry, this is wrong color, I want it purple. Conceptually, the way this works is, uh, let's say you have, um, so the um, probability density for this ends up being something like this, right? Psi absolute value squared, right? And when we say, P probably the being found at some location x, what we really mean is not being exactly at that location x, but x 
plus dx. So this is x, this is x plus dx. And the probability of being found within this location here, that probability is probability density at position x times the interval dx. Good? So what I wrote as p sub x is really probability of um, probability density x. And then I'm just going to write multiply dx here times dx. So these two multiplied together is the p sub x. And uh, how many of these intervals do we have? Infinite number of them, right? In, for infinitesimally small dx. So what does this sum become? Integral. integral, right? Yeah, it goes from the Riemann sum to the integral. That's the limit. So in the limit where dx goes to 0, it's infinitesimally small. The summation becomes integral from x equals 0 to l. So. So that's the formula. It's quite simple. It's actual, you know. Uh, let me uh, r r r write down one more step to actually give you the uh, quantum mechanical formula. So this probability density is psi squared. So this expectation value of x is integral from x equals 0 to L psi of x squared times x dx. Doesn't seem all that hard, so let's uh, try writing it out and see if we can do it for an arbitrary energy eigenfunction. And see what we get. Um, so we are integrating from x equals 0 to L. Uh, let me write this out. I um, guess we have this. So after doing square, we get 2 over L times. Um, sine square of n pi x over l um, times x dx. No, well, I don't. I think I want you to write this in black. Anybody here know how to do this integral? Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't really want to do integration by parts. Let me use Mathematica. <laughs> so this is the integral. And if you really want you to do the integral, you can do integration by parts. You know, this is your u, so it will eventually be differentiated into nothing. And this is, yeah, so I, I don't want to do that. So let me, oh, let me use Wolfram Alpha. I think this is easy, easy enough for Wolfram Alpha to do it. So what I want to do is I want to integrate um, sine squared n times pi times x over l times x with respect to x from 0 to l. All right. <laughs> um, alternatively, you do, oops, oh, that's not right. Um, let me do it this way, sine of it misinterpreted me. Um, um, alternatively, you do look this up in an integration table. And wait, that doesn't seem right either. Oh, uh, indefinite, definite integral from. Hmm, I think I might have done something wrong. Oh, uh, two, yeah, yeah, two over L, that's, uh, um, that's just, uh, that's constant. So I don't need it, I just want you this part done. Um, I guess what I was hoping was um, that these would simplify to, oh, yeah, 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 sorry, Mathematica is a very, um, or anything all from is a very, um, paranoid about doing simplification. It's assuming n is a really general number. So what it really meant to say is this is equal to zero. 
because you know, two pi n is for any n, integer value n, it's zero. And what it really meant to say is this is equal to one. Because two pi n for any integer n is one. Good? So one minus one, well, that's also zero. So it does simplify down to what I want. Minus, minus, so plus um, two pi squared n squared l squared over eight pi squared n squared. So let me do this cancellation here. Pi squared cancel, n squared cancel. Um, I guess, so I have um, one fourth L squared. So that's the result of this integral here. This integral here will give you L squared over four. Now you multiply two over L and you end up with the expectation value of L over two, which is what we are expecting. Okay. Kind of gives you confidence that this is how it's supposed to be.